Welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather Ferris and I am a Pinterest marketing strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create fresh pins or just Pinterest images in general using Adobe Spark, one of my new favorite tools. So grab your coffee and let's dive into today's tutorial. Okay, so let's just get into Adobe Spark. So a lot of people don't realize they can create social media images in here, but it is a great tool to use in your business if you're already paying for Creative Cloud. So this is what your Spark dashboard is going to look like. Now, a few things before we get started. You can build out your brand inside of Adobe Spark. I've already done that, but there are a few glitches, so I wanna warn you about them in advance. When you go to try and add your colors to your color palette and even sometimes adding your logos in here, um, it may glitch out and it, not, it may not define the color specifically. So close out of it, come back to it later. That's what I had to do and it worked fine when I came back to it later. So you can upload that stuff here, but just know if you run into a glitch, it'll be fine. Just come back to it. Now from here, you are going to want to make sure you have all of your stock imagery ready to go, as well as your um, the piece of content you're going to create pins for. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to create a pin for this blog post, and I am going to go in here and just go to you all and Pinterest post. It's going to bring up their template library that you will be able to see. Okay, so these are all of the templates that you can create Pinterest images from. Now you're not stuck to just how this template looks. So if we were to use this template, we're not just stuck with this. We can actually tweak this a little bit. We can change the text, colors, imagery, all of it. So let's get this loaded and I'll show you what I mean. Just first off um, with the image, let's replace the image. We're going to add a photo. We're going to upload a photo. And then let's upload this image. And we don't, so there's two options here. You can create a collage or you can move it freely. We're going to ch choose move freely. Now, if you add your photo in and for some reason it's being wonky, just delete out the other one and bring this image up. So you just have to move it around a little bit. There we go. Okay, and now we can play with our text. So we have our image in the background. Now we can change our text font family. If you wanna change it to your brand font family, you can. And then we can go to text effects. So if you wanted to change this text to be like with a shadow, you can do that. And then within these uh, colors, so you have your primary colors black. If you click the secondary, you can see that it starts changing the color of the item. So you can drag this and play with that. And then if you click on color, you can change it. So if you wanted black and yellow, uh, these are brand colors. All of these are brand colors. Or if you just wanted to tweak it and do it yourself, what you're gonna do is click the current color and then you're going to change click it again and then you can assign whatever color in here that you would like now i'm going to go back to the colors i liked this red and black there we 
we go. So it's under secondary. So I really like the red and black. It stands out quite a, quite a bit there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click the text box and this is gonna come up. So how to create and then I need to change the sizing a little bit. So let's go to type. And in here you can change the size of the font with the sliders or you can slide them here and then you can change your letter spacing if you want your letter spacing to be different or your line spacing. Uh, it's so customizable in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is leave this there and then I'm gonna change the second line of text, fresh pins using Canva. And then I'm gonna bring this up, kind of line it up I'm going to capitalize it and then I'm going to change my text color to green. There we go. So I have now added the text to my pin that I want. Now I'm going to go to the add button and I'm going to add a logo. I'm going to add my primary logo on and you're going to drag it around the image, get it where you want it. Now you have your first Pinterest image. So all you have to do now is download this as a PNG or a JPEG to your computer and you have a fresh image ready to go using Adobe Spark. This program is so powerful. There's so many things you can do for it, uh, do within it, I'm sorry. And um, it's just really fun to use. So if this is something that interests you, honestly, like I've created so many images in here already. I would just suggest hopping in and testing it out. Um, I don't think you need to watch me do a bunch of different tutorials for you to get in there and just start playing around um, because it's a lot of fun to use and the more you use it, the more you'll get accustomed to all of the features within Adobe Spark that you can use. So that's it for this tutorial. That was pretty good, huh? So a lot of people don't realize they can actually use tools like Adobe Spark to create any social media graphics. Creative Cloud is such an amazing tool that I have had in my business for several years. I've paid for it for so long and I had no idea all of the things that I could do with my subscription. So as part of your subscription, if you pay for Creative Cloud, head over there and check out Adobe Spark and let me know how you like it. I really am digging the drag and drop features. Some of the things within the app are a little slower it's okay, it's Adobe, it's to be expected. But I'm excited to bring you this tutorial this week and show you just another way that you can create Pinterest images. I do have some people message me on occasion saying, hey, I don't use Canva, what else can I use? Well, this is your answer for one option. So if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up if you found any value in it, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you would like to see any more tutorials like this one. So that's it for this week. I hope you guys have a great week ahead, whatever day you're watching this, and I will see you next time.